All right, so we have a slight mess here. So I'm going to close this mess now and we're going to start in LabVIEW. We're going to do simulations in LabVIEW. You can do the simulations in MathCAD programs as well, like MathCAD or MATLAB, uh, even on a piece of paper with formulas. I'm not going to go into the, the formula of the maths. Um, we're going to use LabVIEW in this case, just to get the concepts. You can go further on further software if you want. So let's start LabVIEW generating a sine wave. Let me just close my sample program. It's like cooking. You show the, the finished baked cake, but we now I'm going to show you the ingredients of how to build the circuit. So in LabVIEW, uh, I assume that some of you have worked with LabVIEW before. If you didn't work with LabVIEW before, you can go to File, New VI. You can get a, a screen that looks like this. Uh, if you don't have more than one screen, you can just say uh, dial left, right. So this is kind of the outside of the box. This is the inside of the box. Your user is going to see stuff here. All your controls and programming is going to happen on this side. So this is kind of how LabVIEW works. There should be a lot of tutorials on the basics of LabVIEW. But uh, if you follow this closely, you should understand LabVIEW as well. I'm not going to use the advanced programming uh, sets of LabVIEW. As normally you have to pay extra for them. So I'm going to use the base lab view that you get. Uh, I know there is point by point processing that works better in digital signal processing toolkits and so on. But I'm just going to try and get it working with the base set that you do get with lab view. So first thing, as I said, your factory, you measured your factory with something like oscilloscope and you got something like this. And normally we'll do some math on it to see what is happening there. But for now, I kind of, I'm going to generate just a signal as if you would have got it from an um, a input, a analog input, or you would have got it from a oscilloscope. So I'm going to generate something just to explain the concepts again. As I said, I'm going to say later again, where you're going to get your stuff from. So outside, if you right click anywhere on the outside of the box, you'll find stuff like numeric boolean and so on inside the blocks you'll find structures arrays programming so you can see that this part is the programming part this part is the visual part that you can see so to make a signal the first thing we're going to do is we go to the inside of the box right click anywhere look for express it depends on what system yet but you will have express doesn't matter what version you have it might just slightly be on a different place but it will look the same normally in lab if you have hardware you're going to go here to the input DAQ assist or whatever device you're going to work with. If you're going to program FPGA, it's a little bit different. Um, we're going to do then a project and so on. But uh, again, this is just to explain signal processing, as I say. The way I'm designing the filter here, yeah, there is filter toolboxes here as well that you can use. I can see there's a filter, but I'm going to use show you the the core filter and the filter we're designing as I said it's pole zero plot it's a time invariant linear time invariant system again if google that if you want but um, linear time invariant means it's there's no delay whatever every time it takes a sample every time it records a value you're going to get an answer so there's no time delay everything works kind of in real time so the process I'm going to explain here will work for FPGA programming, Arduino programming. If you're going to program on a PIC, you're going to use the same method of programming. Um, I'm just going to show it in live view, but I'll show, as I say, I'll explain again, whenever I get to a part, it can say you can do this in a PIC, or you can do this on Arduino or Java. Um, you must just know the code. So I'm going to simulate an input. So I don't have an actual input now. I'm just going to simulate an input. So we can go the express input simulated signal. Now this looks very nice and this is normally what you want to see a kind of waveform but in industry in real life you don't get this. Things is like a multimeter. You get one voltage at a time. One voltage at a time. One value. You say what's the temperature now? What's the temperature now? So LabVIEW does make life a little bit easier but those that's worked in industry before know you don't get a lot of samples. You get one sample. It's normally one sample on demand. One value. Sometimes it's you with a little notebook and a multimeter 
and then every 10 seconds you'll take a measurement with your multimeter and write it in a notebook or in Excel and then at the end of the day you can have a waveform like this. For quick control we don't want a waveform, we don't want we want one value. So if it's wrong now, change the value now. You can't wait for a while to see uh, what is actually going on. So remember our example, we said our factory is going to go every two seconds. Uh, close this one. Pal. Remember we said that the, the factory is going to, every two seconds something's happening. So I'm going to change my frequency to two hertz. The amplitude, I'm not going to, uh, do the sensor, the LM35 sensor yet. I'm just going to simulate the temperature difference. We'll do the LM35 later. So the amplitude goes from 0 to 40. Means if I put 20 here with the offset of 20, it means we're going to go from 0 to 40. Does this make sense? Remember the formula again. Y equals MX plus C. C here in this case is 20. Uh, this is again not for the sensor, not for the LM35. This is just to simulate the mathematical values for now. Samples per second. So here we have to do some as first. Uh, for now, just make it 200. I'm going to explain a lot of stuff now. Uh, make this 200 samples per second. And then number of samples, 20. We don't get 20. Change that to a single value. So we're going to get one single value going up and down. I'm going to explain the samples per second just now. So num number of samples is 1, samples per second is 200, 20, 20, so if it's 20, 20 it means we go from minus 20 to plus 20, but if I offset it to 20 we're going to go from 0 to 40, our frequency is 2, so it's changing every 2 seconds. Press OK. On our front panel, we can place a numeric indicator. We can also maybe place a meter or a needle. Where did I get this numeric? We can see this indicators, gauges, meters, and so on, depending on how your machine is going to look like. If it's a pick, you have to display this on an LCD screen, maybe, or a seven segment. And if you understand what I'm trying to say now. If you're going to simulate a signal in the Arduino or something, you'll probably have to put the formula in. So now we're just going to make this just to see what's happening. See, and every time I run the software, it measures one thing. Let me just change that to 14. But the problem is now, can you see the software only run once? And we want to do a simulation as in real life. We want to see, is it going to run up and down? So, I'm going to put this in a while loop. Sorry, I just slow down. Now I'm going quick. Under structures, we're going to program a little now. We're going to say while loop. Put a while loop there. Right click on this one, say create control. So now this program will say while that emergency stop is not pressed, while nobody presses that button, this loop is going to run forever. We just run it there. Run with that single run function. There we can see goes really quick up and down. Let's just stop it first. 